hungry. In our service, not to look for a reward of your favor, but see you in those we serve. Open our hearts and minds to where you are at work, and remind us that you are there with us always, blessing the poor, the lonely, the rejected, just as you bless us. Help us to see and to share. Amen. We've got a bunch of announcements this morning, and I'll ask you to look at details in the bulletin that are printed there. But just a few reminders that next week is Membership Sunday on the 24th, and if you're interested in joining the church by membership or proclamation of faith, to see Glenn Baskerville or Janet Patterson. And then the World Day of Prayer is on Friday, March the 1st. It's at 2 o'clock at Reynolds Creek United. And it's based all around Slovenia this year. So it's a, it'll be an interesting worship service of learning about their development as a country and their culture and a celebration worldwide. On March 17th is the Reynolds Creek United Church Irish Stew Supper. So the supper is at 5.30. It's at the Hutchinson Hall in Putnam. Uh, this Tickets are $25, there's a concert, and you can contact Joyce Paley or Muriel there, their numbers are in the bulletin. And there's a reminder that the Middlesex Presbyterial UCW Annual Meeting is on Wednesday, February 27th. At 8.30 a.m., the coffee will be on. And also, for the, all the women of the congregation, we're invited to Reynolds Creek for a Ladies Fellowship event on Friday, February 22nd. If you want to put that in your calendars, then we can contact the, the numbers there to let them know if you want to bring something. It's a potluck lunch and with a program to follow. And last but not least, St. John's United Church in Springfield is hosting a concert on the 24th at 1 o'clock. Their original and pop tunes all the covers, it's a free will offering, so show up and have some cash for them and have fun. <laughs> Let us join together in professing our faith in the new creed. We are not alone.
God's love and hope. Amen. Jesus. 
things that seem to balance or tip the scale. Blessed are the poor. Blessed are the hungry and the meek. All of these things are in contrast to what we're saying. Jesus is saying something revolutionary. He's in the crowd and he's there to stir things up. He's kind of a muckraker and he likes making trouble. He likes questioning our ideas, these strong held beliefs that we think are the norm. And he says, wait a second, do we have to really think about it like that? I think it's different. God is telling me something different. So in ancient Israel, you were seen as blessed by God if you held property, if you had a lot of wealth, if you had a lot of slaves or servants. And if you were without all those things, maybe God was looking and, and wondering about you. Maybe you had done something to disfavor God. Maybe you were on the outskirts of God's opinion. Maybe he was angry with you or you had failed to do something. And Jesus comes in and says, no, I don't really think that's the case. I think those people back there on the outskirts are God's people and they are blessed as much as we are. And you people up on the mountain with your wealth might be careful. In the realization of how quickly can you tumble down? How quickly can things in our life change <coughs> and switch positions with the person you were thinking was on the down and out? It's a sort of hypocrisy in a sense. Right? We're good, we're up here, we're wealthy, we've got enough to eat, we're happy, we're laughing, but we fail to realize how quickly life can change. And Jesus is saying, no one is blessed more or less than another. And it's ex the extreme thing of saying what happened this weekend. Taking a little girl and her life and saying, blessed is that little girl. Well, that seems obvious. Blessed is her mother who is mourning. Also, something that we wouldn't question. But blessed also is the father. And what is the track that God is in? How desperate and down does a person have to be to take the life of his child? And Jesus walks in and says, no, 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 don't hate that person, for he is blessed in the eyes of God, just as you are blessed in the eyes of God. And that is the radical thinking of talking about the rich and the poor and the meek. And the woes to all of us who live on a mountain in relative privilege <coughs> and who often fail to see how we are. We are all blessed sinners in our humanity. One minute you can have it all and then nothing. Some might have it all until death. Some might have nothing until death. But the kingdom of God is a level playing field among the poor and the sick is where we discover Jesus. It is where we meet Jesus in a soup kitchen and it is not by our service where we meet him but by the relationships we form with the people and Jesus in action. So it is not good service. We are Christian people and we have so we provide. But where do we learn about Jesus in meeting somebody who has experienced trouble, who grew up in a healthy, wealthy household, who went to university and there met depression, which spiraled into alcoholism, which spiraled into drug addiction, which spiraled into being rejected from his family, from not having a home, for being on the streets and having nowhere to go. How quickly can a life change and our perspective change in learning about these people, in having them exposed in some way to intimacy of relationship? What do we learn? And as I was reading this, I know we're far from Christmas, but I couldn't help thinking of the Grinch. From high on his mountain top, the Grinch sits doing. He's looking at all the blessed who's and they make him sick in their abundance. In their giving and consumption and their greed and their distorting of whatever Christmas is supposed to be. 
always greener on the other side, even though the ridge is pretty green. And then there's Cindy Lou Who, who was not more than two, and something happened. Something beautiful and magical happens in that moment, <coughs> and it's an instant that even the Grinch can't ruin. He can't be honest as he's stuffing her Christmas tree up the chimney. He's already taken all the presents that are gone. And this little voice comes up from behind him and asks him why. And he can't just be honest. He can't say, hey, little girl, there's no Santa Claus. He doesn't exist. Crushing all this beautiful fantasy. He could. He could make up a lie. He could pop a bubble. But he doesn't. Instead, he lies. And he lies a good kind of lie. He says, no, no, there's a light on one side that isn't working. I'm going to take it back to my workshop and fix it, and I'll bring it back. And he gives her a drink. And he pats her head. And he sends her back to bed. And something happens. And something happens after the Grinch steals Christmas. There are the hooves as the Grinch looks down, about to dump all the presents off Mount Crumpet. And they're gathered around the Christmas tree. I know this Christmas tree comes from a pagan symbol that has nothing to do with the birth of Jesus. But besides the point, it is now a symbol of Christmas, a symbol of Jesus in the world, a symbol of God's living salvation. And they stand in a circle around this Christ figure, and they sing. Never mind the fact that there are no crying Jews in ancient Israel, and there still aren't in modern Israel, but they're singing, and they're worshiping, and they're praising this beauty together. Those who had abundance, and now empty-handed, they celebrate. In an instant, their abundance is gone. And what do we learn from one another in this community of joy? All of us blessed. And the bridge has to come racing down the mountain. He is drawn to that worship. He is drawn to that community and that call of joy and celebration in blessings without. What do we learn and feel and experience in bumping into somebody and their story, in knowing their plight. Blessed is the man dying from AIDS. And we ask why. Surrounded by family at his bedside, someone who loves him and cares for him. And the person, woe to you who are wealthy, and maybe die alone. Life in God is an equal playing field, and there is no judgment of one above another, because we all suffer. We are in need of healing the rich and the poor. We meet on the plane, the level ground before God, who offers us all, the tall and the small, the weeping and laughing, offers us the gift of grace. Amen. Let's join together in singing the hymn number 85, Take, O Take Me As I Am, in more voices.